Hello, I'm Dr. TJ Gentry for KPOL and Contact Mission, and I have a question for you. Is it possible that our desires, those seemingly innate longings that all of us have for such things as happiness, security, or peace, is it possible that these and similar longings point us to something deeper, something beyond ourselves, possibly even to God? Several notable Christian thinkers have thought this was so, and their considerations may be collectively described as the argument from desire. Consider, for example, Thomas Aquinas, an important philosopher theologian of the Middle Ages. In his Summa Theologia, Aquinas writes that everything that has an intellect naturally desires to always exist, but a natural desire cannot be in vain. Interesting for sure. Let's think about what he is getting at for a moment. First, Aquinas highlights that there is a desire to always exist that all of us have. And who would disagree? After all, we eat rather than starve, we take shelter rather than freeze, and we take medicine when we are sick rather than languish and perish. All of these are examples of a desire to exist, to live and not die. And we all have such desires. What should we make of them? Well, they reveal something about us about all humanity, that there is an impulse within us for more than this life. There is a longing for some type of eternal life. And as Aquinas pointedly concludes, such a de natural desire cannot be in vain. Rather, to follow his thought out to its conclusion, Aquinas recognizes that each of us has an innate desire for the eternal. And rather than being a desire that is vain, which is to say it is something that cannot be realized, that desire for the eternal points us beyond itself to what and who can fulfill it. In short, that desire points to the eternal, the divine, to God. Another proponent of the argument from desire is the inimitable C.S. Lewis. In his work, Mere Christianity, Lewis writes, Creatures are not born with desires unless satisfaction for these desires exists. A baby feels hunger. Well, there's such a thing as food. A duckling wants to swim. Well, there's such a thing as water. Men feel sexual desire. Well, there's such a thing as sex. If I find in myself a desire which no experience in this world can satisfy, the most probable explanation is that I was made for another world. Notice how Lewis makes his argument. With echoes of Aquinas, Lewis begins by recognizing the innate desires found in the world around us. A hungry baby desires food, a fledgling duckling desires to swim, a man desires sexual intimacy. All such desires are legitimate and they all look beyond themselves to a fulfillment. Seems reasonable, doesn't it? Of course, because we can all relate to what it is like to have a desire and find its fulfillment. We may not have every desire fulfilled, and not every desire is necessarily good, but we rest when we're tired and eat when we're hungry because we have a way to match desire and fulfillment in these and similar things. However, this is where Lewis moves beyond this life and this world to the possibility of eternal life and a world to come. What about a desire that cannot find its fulfillment in this life? It's not an unjustified conclusion that Lewis makes in this regard. No, what he touches is the awareness in all of us that there is a certain otherworldliness to some of our desires. We look around in this life and do not find the ultimate peace and wholeness we seek. We may have moments when we have a deep and pervasive joy, but the experience elicits in us a thirst for more joy, for perfect joy. What should we make of such unfulfilled longings? To quote Lewis again, if I find in myself a desire which no experience in this world can satisfy, the most probable explanation is that I was made for another world. Surely Lewis is right, and our longings for more reveal that there is more, more life, eternal life. Our unfulfilled desires point us beyond ourselves to the God who, as Augustine famously said, made us for himself, and our hearts are restless until they rest in him. One more example of the argument from desire comes from the Christian philosopher, Peter Kraft. Stated in syllogistic form with premises and a conclusion, Kraft's expression of the argument from desire is as follows. 
premise one. Every natural innate desire in us corresponds to some real object that can satisfy that desire. Premise two, but there exists in us a desire which nothing in time, nothing on earth, no creature can satisfy. Conclusion, therefore, there must exist something more than time, earth, and creatures which can satisfy this desire. This something is what people call God and life with God forever. Let's explore Crape's argument a bit more. Notice that in a manner like Aquinas and Lewis, Crape moves from the natural to the supernatural. In his first premise, the connection is made between natural desires to their fulfillment, from hunger to food and so on, such as the human experience. What is desired innately and naturally is realized in some real object that can satisfy that desire. So far, so good. But then, Crave touches on desires that do not find any means of fulfillment. There are desires that transcend our time and place, which go beyond our creaturely capacities. Are such deep longings and transcendent desires simply meant to frustrate us, never intended to find fulfillment? Are they tantamount to the punishment of the mythical Sisyphus, condemned by Zeus to roll a boulder uphill for all eternity, only to have it roll back down each time he nears the top? Even the most jaded and skeptical among us find that possibility truly distasteful, such as the atheist existential philosopher Jean-Paul Sartre, who frankly confessed that there comes a time when one asks, is that all there is? The answer to Sartre and others, to all of us when we are honest, about the paradoxical experience of wanting something beyond what can be attained in this life is that such longings are real and they require something more than our current existence offers. As Crave says, there must exist something more than time, earth, and creatures which can satisfy such desires. Crave concludes along with Lewis, Aquinas, Augustine, and myriad others that such higher desires and longings point us to and find their fulfillment in God and a life with Him forever. To summarize, the argument from desire begins with the recognition that our natural, innate desires point beyond themselves to a fulfillment in this world, hunger, thirst, loneliness. All these desires are not given in vain. Likewise, when we recognize in ourselves deeper longings and desires that cannot be fulfilled in this life, we can reasonably conclude that this is because we are made for more than just this life. Our desires for more point us to beyond this world to God and to his abundant life offered freely in Christ Jesus. As the writer of Ecclesiastes 3.11 tells us, God has made everything beautiful in its time. Also, he has put eternity in their hearts. So yes, that desire for more than this life is real and can find its fulfillment only in God, the one in whom, to quote Paul in Acts 17, 28, we live and move and have our being. I'm Dr. T.J. Gentry for K-Paul and Contact Mission.